Hey, what is going on YouTube? Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and today we are in the F. Schultz. And guys, the F stands for fun. The F. Schultz is listed as a destroyer, but do not be fooled. This is a cruiser in disguise. It is basically an alternate Elbing. If you guys have the Elbing, you know what I'm talking about. But if not, the German Renaissance destroyers were armed with the heavier 150 millimeter guns. And combined with the increased accuracy as well as the AP pen, these things are basically a little cruiser without a citadel. Now, there are some slight differences, and we do go over the stats and commander guide at the end of the game. But basically, you're going to want to be playing this thing as an aggressive uh, forward destroyer utilizing the AP a lot more than the HE. Now, one of the main differences is the range of your torpedoes. You don't quite have as good of range as you normally do with the Elbing. I believe the Elbing is like 12 and a half or 13, uh, and these are only eight, which is kind of synonymous with the rest of the line here. And we actually have a little bit of a celebrity in this game. We have Mr. 40 ounce fan himself, the championed meme lord of the Facebook pages and someone that I actually call uh, a friend uh, over Xbox we've never actually met but he's just a good guy has a good head on his shoulders and he's also in the Kronstadt in this game and provides us a lot of support now I'm gonna be quite honest these ships are not the easiest to play I do believe they have a high skill floor and there's two reasons for that number one you don't have the best concealment and even the best DPM but number two you still have to fulfill your roles as a destroyer while trying to get cruiser type advantages you know, i.e. broadsides and trying to, to really damage other cruisers and even battleships. But the problem in lies is when you get another destroyer trying to get the same cap that you were trying to get, and that is pretty much what happens throughout a majority of this game. You can see early on here I'm working my way into that cap, trying to get, uh, honestly, a, a little bit of a flank here. I'm a little bit wider than I potentially normally would be. And of course, the reason for that is you want to get the broadsides um, and, and just the flat angles uh, you know, to do the max amount of damage. And you guys will see very shortly here. I didn't want to give up position, however. Now, normally I could just smoke up. We would probably have spottings, but I want these ships to get closer in. Some people, um, when they kind of use their smoke in a destroyer, they just, they get at max range and, and they just smoke up immediately and then that battleship can back up and they're out of their range. But here, we actually have another Elbing, which is, a, like we said, kind of the sister ship to us. We catch it broadside and you can see that very first salvo was like 4,300 damage with AP. Now, of course, the Elbing, similar to our ship, has a little bit of a thicker armor plate. On other destroyers, you're only going to be doing overpen damage, but if they angle slightly, you will be getting that full penetration damage. And here, with two full salvos, we basically have a chunk of 9,000 damage. And that is a perfect example right there of, of kind of what you can do to an angled destroyer. Uh, we get that Elbing at an angle, and that's 5,000 damage. I'm not exactly sure what or why he was stuck there, but it looks like his engine was out, so we go ahead and switch to to the HE, we get a permanent fire. He must have burned his damage con earlier, but regardless, we're just trying to do the most amount of damage we can. Now, sometimes, uh, especially according to uh, some very informed viewers in my streams, I don't shoot HE enough, but on this ship, you're going to be wanting to use the AP a majority of the time, and that salvo on the Columbo and this one right here is a good example why. That was a 7,000 damage salvo with a around a five and a half second reload here. You are just doing a mass amount of damage, and it's truly sometimes un, you know, it, battleship players don't expect that, right? They think you're a destroyer, oh, he's going to be trying to torp me, and you should be trying to use your torpedoes when you can, but you definitely want to put yourself in situations where you can just abuse those broadsides, and we have decimated some cruisers. I believe I had a salvo on a Brisbane, what I got like four or five citadels unfortunately we didn't get the finishing touch for the dev strike but yeah you can absolutely decimate people and the the thing about this ship is you don't have a citadel yourself and you're a little bit harder to hit uh, especially you know with the smaller size compared to some other ships now that being said we have also gotten caught out in certain situations and with the decreased mobility of this ship if you don't have your smoke or you're not paying attention or you do get focused because you're a community contributor you will not last that long so here what we're doing is we're trying to allow our team to be the the battering rams right we do have an italian battleship sort of doing the right thing unfortunately i wish he would have just waited a little bit longer we could have allowed you know more of these ships to focus on him and get themselves into position but here we're also just throwing out torpedoes uh, torpedoing like we've mentioned before is complete guesswork uh, they actually got that minnesota with a few but judging especially with these slower torpedoes that you have in this ship i believe they're 54 knots by the time those torpedoes get you know to 
to their destination, you can see it's about 50 seconds. Now we know that the IQ of the standard Battleship player is probably around the same you know, time to target destination, but unfortunately I don't know where or what the decisions that they are going to make. So throwing out those torpedoes is better than not, you know, just having them you know, on your boat, but don't try to be a torpedo boat is, is kind of the lesson that I'm trying to get out you know, with a lot more words than I need to be. But with a well-placed salvo, that is one ship down in terms of the Elbing. But if you look, our team, is doing the classic blue team thing there. We have two destroyers down as well as another battleship and of course that is on the other side. And actually the side with the least amount of control uh, you can see on the A side there. Uh, we don't have that nor do we have the Bravo cap. There was one, two, three, four, five ships. Well, I guess you could you know discount the Holland because he was in Bravo but it was a four on three over here uh, and yeah, our team still lost the advantage on the other side. But the good news is I do have somewhat of a Chad in the uh, Kronstadt there. And actually, I, I would believe, I want to say this because 40 Ounce would be the first one to tell you he is not a super unicum Chad, try hard. But he's somebody that just appreciates this game for what it is and has learned throughout the years. Um, I'm going to leave a comment up to him and I'll try and pin it. But by simply just kind of knowing and understanding the game and playing, you know, your ship on the side it spawns on, it, he, he does fantastic for this team. Now, I'm going to give him a little bit more credit than saying he's an average player because he's definitely a little bit above average. But uh, between him and getting those California servers, we actually do conduct a pretty decent comeback here uh, for our team. Now hopefully you guys did notice that we went guns hot in open water there in, in a sort of defensive position, but we did lose about a third of our health doing so. So you can of course do that a few times without concealment, but you just need to put yourself in the right spot. We probably didn't dodge the best, but like I said, you know, like I've said on stream, these things are basically like driving toasters. You don't have the best maneuverability, so you're definitely going to be one to paying attention to your positioning when doing so. Now whether or not a little bit of that extra focus fire was because we have the YouTube badge in our name. We will never know, but it's just something to be aware of when you are playing these boats. We actually caught an Oyster Yachtlin the other day uh, out of position, and he went guns hot on us, and then we waited for him to be within line of sight of our teammates. We popped our smoke screen, and he was basically gone within a matter of 60 seconds. So destroyer players, like we mentioned in a video the other day, are, are good destroyer players are few and far between. And you could probably say the same for most players, uh, you know, in in every class of ships in this game. But you really destroy bad destroyer play is noticed a lot more than than most other classes. And speaking of poor play, it is now a four on four. We launched our torpedoes in kind of an open spread pattern there uh, as they slowly make their way to target. We're gonna go ahead and smoke up and work our way into the cap here. And in the meantime, we actually had Mr. 40 ounce fan radar that Holland, we took a salvo, uh, we, we took a shot that went his way. Now I want you guys to pay attention to my damage in these next, you know, upcoming minutes here. We're around 60 to 70,000. We actually just got like a 7,000 uh, hit on that Columbo there. But I, I want you guys to keep note of that. Uh, also a little side note, we, we don't, we spread out our torpedoes in this situation and, and I'm going to explain why. I don't know, like we talked about, there's a long time to target and I don't know what this breast player is thinking. Now sometimes you can never guess what they're thinking, but that one torpedo hit was far more valuable than a miss. And by opening up and spreading out the surface area, especially in a game when you have good teammates, you, you increase your odds uh, of sinking that ship. Now, whether he, or not he would have rammed or tried for the drive-by, we have no idea. But by securing the, even that one hit, we are making sure and ensuring that our teammates were able to live in that situation. So um, just a little lesson. I often see destroyer players stacking torpedoes. And yes, when you're going against a low IQ battleship player who doesn't turn their ship, and then as soon as they get dev struck, go, you know, go straight to the forums and complain. You're going to be getting, you know, more hits. But against players with, you know, certain intelligence, that that hit and that potential flood is far more valuable than, than stacking all your torpedoes and missing. Now, again, there's, you know, some nuance in that situation. Sometimes when they're angled towards you, uh, you do want to stack your torpedoes to decrease that RNG surface area. There is actually what we call dispersion between torpedoes, sometimes those gaps in between. But taking away that 12,000 damage we got from that torpedo hit. I want you guys to look at our damage. 116,000 damage, and we just actually had a uh, six uh, penetration hit on that Columbo. Now, the max that a penetration can do 
uh, is I believe 33%. I, I need to double check my maths or, you know, the, the forums on that one. But even getting the 10% damage with these AP shells is just going to eat alive the broadside of this Columbo. You can see that we have taken nearly half of his health here by simply just, you know, sitting here at kind of long range and spamming him with AP. Uh, I know that a lot of people complain about the HE spam, but uh, you're, you're definitely going to be complaining about the AP spam if you get a good player. On top of that, you notice our positioning. We put ourselves sort of in that diagonal spot of his salvo, uh, and he missed all but one shell. So even without smoke, even without, you know, HE and getting the fires, and we actually got zero citadels in this game, uh, you, <laughs> we have still done a massive amount of damage to both battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Now, I will give actually a lot of credit to our other two teammates in this situation. Forty and I have kind of been holding off the mass attack, you know, from four or five ships on this side. Um, and our other teammates in the meantime actually got the Alpha and Bravo caps. Now, in this situation, I believe the, high, the Ohio is probably a little bit frustrated with me. As you can see, he's kind of pinging me here. But I can't rush into this situation, especially with a, what is my concealment, 6.1. I can't rush in and try and just immediately gunboat down these destroyers without first taking care of the battleships and the other cruisers on the enemy team, and that is exactly what we did in this situation. Now, that being said, you do still have a job and a role to fulfill when you choose this ship, and that is sort of what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. You are still a destroyer that needs to spot and try to take out enemy destroyers. You just need to do it on your own terms, um, and that is sometimes why I truly hate very you know, narrow focus destroyers, for example, like the Shimakaze or the, the Jaeger or something like that, where you don't really have um, that the option or the ability to kind of counter other gunboat type destroyers. In this ship, you have that 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 role, but you need, like I said, you need to put it, you need to, to create your own set of circumstances and control the engagement. That is, you know, that is, of course, what I preach a lot uh, in destroyer play. A lot of destroyer players just YOLO rush blindly in with no, without looking at their team or, or you know, looking Looking at what their team is doing and then they get in a gunfight and you know of course there's six ships shooting at them and then there's none for their you know there's no blue teammates uh in support of their own but here we actually do push blindly in and that is when we catch this holland here we have the ap loaded we could have you know again another argument could be could be made for the he but you can see some team focus fire and at this point i'm just trying to trade with this holland uh even if he does get the torpedoes on it's not ready uh, going to affect the game as long as we secure this kill. We have the clear health advantage, and with the, you know, the support of our teammates, we actually do control uh, this engagement here. And we, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't get the full penetrations, but we do get just, just talking about the massive chunk damage. The Holland is a moderate gunboat. Now, it's definitely a little more torpedo focused, but it does have those fast firing guns. And a mistake that a lot of destroyer players make is they don't load AP when it's appropriate. Now, of course, this is an AP focused boat as well as potentially other ships like the Daring. But even in a ship like the Holland, when a destroyer gives you broadside, you definitely want to load the AP, especially because a ship like this and the Elbing and the, the Kaba and a few others they have a thicker armor plate, which will actually arm a lot of those low caliber shells. I believe the Holland has 113 or 120 millimeter guns. I don't don't quote me on that, but I believe they're lower caliber. Um, and if he would have loaded the AP, he probably would have either traded with us or done a lot more damage than just shattering the HE. But regardless, uh, he was eliminated with uh, our team support. And I'm actually just going to speed up the rest of this game because the Shima does the classic Shima thing. Uh, and, and just hide and, and run away for the rest of the game. Now, actually, he if he does get, if he would have secured another kill, he could have potentially gotten the win, which is why this is actually not the best play to sort of chase him, but you can see that I am on four kills, being around 142,000 damage here. I wanted the high caliber and, of course, the Kraken, the uh, piece de resistance. No, I, some people put way too much emphasis on Krakens. Um, as opposed to just, you know, doing the right thing. I think XP is one of the best indicators. Now, of course, you can cheese XP, um, you know, but I, again, I, by cheesing XP, like we talked about, you're doing things that are helping your team win for the most part. Um, so a, a good reference, but, you know, in this situation, I, I wanted to get it because it was, it was a pretty good game, and, of course, I wanted to, you know, highlight and showcase this boat as well as, you know, get, get a video with my good friend 40 Ounce here. But that is a game, a hard come from behind victory in a sense. So shout out to other, you know, kind of the four teammates there in the end. 
Uh, but 142,000 damage with only one torpedo hit, no floods, one fire, and the rest of that was AP damage. I want you guys to kind of keep that in the back of your head. 31-16 with me being 10 points better, of course, than 40. No, that is an excellent score from 40. Uh, the breast did, you know, pretty decent there as well as the, you know, the Ohio getting 19-22. Uh, try, trying to average 1,500 XP, in a, especially in a win, is, you know, is a decent is a decent game, I'd say, for the average player. Now, me personally, I'm trying to push 2,000. In, in most games to keep my average up there but there was a message we sent to 40 a, a good chap but i wanted to finish out this this video here but there she is the f schultz an ap absolute monster um, and let's go ahead and go over these stats and commander guide here towards the end of the video if you're watching this far you're a true chad let's start with our modifications aiming system mod one in the first slot there propulsion in the second slot now an argument could be made in the third slot there for steering gears you don't, I, I chose concealment just because I don't like, the, the without concealment mod, you're pushing out to seven kilometers of concealment, so it's it's really how you want to play it, but you are pretty sluggish, so steering gear argument could be made, but I just don't, I don't like having a, you know, that much in terms of, or lacking that much in terms of concealment, which was, you know, I can make the counter argument to say that it's a good thing towards the end of that video when we were detected outside of the Holland's range, but we had enough time to chase him down. And then, of course, in the fourth slot, we are running reload. One thing I did forget to mention about this boat is it does have a longer range than the Elbing, uh, but we'll go over that in a moment here when we go over the stats. Uh, but let's start first with the survivability, 32,080 health. And we are running Sims on our build, so a little bit more than the standard. And here's the artillery, 3x2, 150mm guns, 12.7 kilometers of range, which you, you almost get like 2,000 more meters uh, of range uh, on this boat than you do with the Elbing. So I like I said, I, I like this boat personally over the Elbing, although I do believe the Elbing has its other advantages, which include the torpedoes. Only 8 kilometers of range, 54 knot speed, so very slow torps without that much range. You're not going to be doing much in terms of torpedoes unless it is YOLO rushing, which I don't really recommend. We did get caught in a situation the other day against an Ohio, but yeah, those are the torps, and the Elbing definitely has the advantage on those. The AA defense is slightly worse than the Elbing. You do get the advanced AA consumable, and the AA is definitely better than most destroyers, but it's a 58 average there, so the maneuverability is, like we mentioned, pretty sluggish. I feel like I'm driving a toaster there. Uh, pretty large turning circle as well with a slow top speed. And there is our concealment at a 6.1, which definitely is going to get worse if you run uh, if you run steering gears. But as you guys can see, a pretty Chad score. Now, of course, there's only 18 games, but statistically speaking, you only need 20 to really make this statistically significant with a p-value of 0.05. Uh, I don't know where we got 100 games from, but regardless, 2165 average XP and an 87,000 average damage. That's pretty chad. But let's go ahead and take a peek at the armor. You can see it's pretty much all blue, but I want you to pay attention to that middle belt there. That middle belt, I believe, is uh, 25 which can arm some thicker uh, destroyer shells. Yeah, you can see it there. It's 25 on the side. Uh, so it, like we mentioned in game, if that Holland would have switched to the AP and hit that specific belt, he probably would have gotten uh, a lot more damage than potentially shooting or spamming the low caliber HE. So it's just something to keep in mind. And there, of course, is the overview. I think this port with the overview is just one of the best looking you know, cinematic shots in the game. I think Wargaming does a fantastic, the art department does a fantastic job. But uh, that is the F Schultz. I hope you guys enjoyed that first look type video. The F is for fun. So if you guys are looking for something to break the mold of the game, this is definitely it. And of course, let us go over our commander, Mr. Eric Bay, one of the best free to play uh, commanders. Of course, we're running Observant Rage. We have Mortar in the second slot. And we actually have Twist and Track in the third slot there. And I like, I, I choose Twist and Track over uh, Perceptive due to the turret traverse. It's a little bit slower, especially on the German destroyers. Uh, so I think that is more important because you get, of course, the RPF ability, um, which is that little gray half circle, as well as your turret traverse. So you can, I mean, you can really choose either one, but I, I prefer Twist and Track in this situation. And the, the last one, Torpedo Royale, is more for like the Z-23 and those other boats, the Z-46. It's a little more, it applies a little bit better. You could honestly choose Smoke on the Water here. It, the fourth one's just kind of 
whatever fits your fancy. And of course, we are running Unstoppable. Now, this is kind of, I, I need to switch this. Jersey Swirsky here is probably not the best inspiration. You could probably choose Mordoff or a different one, which I was actually thinking about changing when I was recording this. Uh, but Sims is also a good pick to increase your health there. Uh, I would, you could choose Rumble uh, for increased range as well, but sometimes increased range actually hurts you. Probably not in this situation, but some people are like, yeah, I have my battleship out to 20 kilometers. Well, you know what happens when you shoot at 20 kilometers? You're detected at 20 kilometers and that you know puts you up just for sometimes concealment is is definitely a little bit better but i don't think that swirsky is necessarily the right pick but uh, that is the video i hope you guys enjoyed that one this one was fun to make fun to play and fun to make again a huge shout out to 40 he's been a supporter of the channel since i was raging on on twitch all those years ago but uh, yeah really appreciate you guys man i won't i won't see you on stream for a couple days uh, maybe a week, but uh, Spartan actually asked if we wanted to play, and that that might be just enough to <laughs> to get me out of out of this hiatus. But uh, definitely going to be making videos and playing. So if you see me out there, uh, leave me alone if you're on the enemy team. But yeah, I love you guys. Aaron hey, hey, out. Peace.